Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another edition of On the Mic with Mike. I am your host, Mike Larkin, and joining me today, making her third appearance on On the Mic with Mike, she is a package of bad assery. She is a content creator. She's got the Mytel Vinyl vibe. She's just doing the damn thing and putting herself out there and really showcasing why she is a woman who exudes and accentuates internal and external beauty, the one and the only Miss Lexa Stahl. How you doing, Lexa? Hello, I'm great. I'm happy to be back for a third time, even though I thought it was my second time. But, you know, sometimes life is a bit of a blur. So, hey, I got to say, it's great always doing this because every time I see my guests, folks, we get to see a lot of great work and adaptation and transformation and transmogrifying with all their works. And I got to say, ma'am, like I mentioned to that introduction here and a rightful one at that, folks, because first of all, if you've not checked out Lexus Stahl over here, which I got to put this out here first and foremost, Temptress Lexa, man. I like that. You got the muscles. Yeah, I just made that up. So I was kind of going back and forth about having a stage name. Um, I, I don't want to say I made the mistake of utilizing my real name for everything. But, you know, it was something that over the years I've just been kind of like, oh, I need to just change it now. I need to. Z-. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to, but I'm just going to have like this. I don't know, like alias Temptress Lexa, which I just started like. I haven't put it much places, but I put it on Twitter and every username is going to stay the same just because I don't like to change stuff up. Um, You know, but I'm just kind of like spicing that in there a little bit, like referring to myself as Temptress Lexa in like um, descriptions and stuff. And that's fun. And I think that that's a great like descriptive word for me. Um, So I I like it a lot. Um, it, It flows for sure. It took me a little bit of time to like try to figure out like what I wanted. And I think that that's a really good descriptive word. And I don't think I've seen any other um, content creators use temptress. Um, So I think it's a great word. Like it just stuck out to me. And I was like, I like that. So I'm going to start spicing it in there. Don't expect to see me as temptress Lexa anywhere or everywhere yet. But like you'll see it spiced in there a little bit. Well, I look at it from a stance, too, as well as, first of all, as we always talk about with sex sales and sex appeal, with a name like Temptress here, every man always likes to fight their temptation. So, I mean, with Temptress, I mean, it works, it fits, it's a nice little marketing strategy, and it it does have that very genesis qua, very nice flow to it. I mean, keep it simple, as they say, right? For sure. To me, Temptress is like, it's, it's feminine, and it's sexy, but it's also badass, but it's not too badass, but it's not too feminine. So, I think it's like the perfect word for me. I think so too. And I think what I do admire about you, and I say this with the wholeheartedly, the utmost sincerity and respect, I think for the woman like yourself, and I love the fact that we'll start it off here too as well, combative nature, there's so many great different art forms out there. And I mean, you've been training, you've been kicking, you've been striking, you've been BJJ and jujitsu and up, man. Let's talk about gravitating toward this field because we see the training videos on social media. We see you just putting in that work from that standpoint. You're really learning the art of discipline. You're really expanding the horizons and really exploring this new avenue, if you will, and leveling up, so to speak, taking it to another level. Let's talk about the jujitsu side of things, because, man, I would not want to meet you in the back alley. Goodness. (laughs) Yeah, that's really what I want to talk about. You know, Um, obviously, I'll still consider myself a bodybuilder, um, you know, always because I am always working to, you know, improve my physique and, you know, get stronger. Um, But now it's kind of in like different ways. Um, so I've really had to navigate the gym a bit differently, um, over the past year of doing jujitsu. Um, so I've been doing jujitsu for about what, um, 15 months or so. And, um, it was just like bodybuilding. It was like the first day I stepped on the mats. Cause like I was with my boxing coach and he's like, okay, let's go on the mats. And I was like, oh shit, really? Like one day, you know, it was like, November of 2020, what would that be Two November of 2022? He's like, let's go on the mats. And I was like, oh my God. And as soon as we did it, he could just tell. He's like, you're way better at this than boxing, basically. Like this, you understand. And this, like the way that I move and the way that, you know what I mean? Compared to boxing, it was just like a no brainer that anybody would see that, you know, it's, um, it's more natural for my body to grapple rather than box. Um, and so I fell in love with it right away. Um, so I've been doing jujitsu. I've done anywhere from, I don't know, four to five to like 10 classes per week, every week since I started. Um, so when I first started, I was doing like 10 classes a week a lot. Like I was doing two days a lot and stuff. 
Um, but now I think I found more of like a sweet spot, just doing like five classes a week, maybe six. And then, um, you know, if work gets really busy and demanding, even more than usual, maybe I'll only hit like four a week um, on some very seldom weeks. But um, yeah, I'm training a lot and I, I love it. And I love the community too, um, because you need to work together to improve and everyone's just so cool. Um, and it's just such a good culture, um, you know, where I train, especially it's like, everyone's like family from day one and, you know, it's just great. I just, it's really like therapy. Um, so it's, it's similar to bodybuilding, you know, I fell in love right away and, you know, I love it and it's going to be a forever thing. Um, so yeah, and I could actually tie it into work, (laughs) which is, I mean, such a blessing, honestly, um, you know, that I can you know, be better at sort of fetish wrestling and stuff like that and beating dudes asses and people love it. And, you know, it's fun that I have the training and it's like, obviously I'm in there training. No one, like a lot of my friends in there, like all guys, like they don't really know what I do, you know? And like, I don't talk about it obviously, but some of them do. And, you know, it's kind of funny because, you know, they make jokes here and there, but it's all like in good, like happy, healthy nature, you know? So it's just, it's just great. Honestly, is really life changing for me. So I'm very glad that I found it. I got to say, first and foremost, I'm going to put the image and the overall verbiage here. Hand in glove, man. Hand in glove. And I got to put it to you like this. What I love about it, too, is, well, you talk about the overall, we mentioned art, form, and discipline, but the fluidity, the crispness that goes into the moves within the jujitsu form, and especially with fetish wrestling. My God, this woman's over here doing head scissors, leg scissors, put me on a body scissor. Oh, my goodness. But what I like about that, too, as well, is when you use the term fetish, right? There's many different preferences. It showcases the uniqueness, the one expansion of horizons with what we're into because everybody, everybody's different with their personalities and what they really like. But I think for you, and I think you can agree with this, everybody has so many different perspectives and different overall precision of what they like and what they're into. So it's really given a chance for a lot of people to explore. And like you mentioned, the camaraderie that is in the community, it's really loving and it's really engaging to feel with one of the clientels, right? Oh, for sure. Definitely. Um, So with the community, I mean, I guess there's the different communities like where I train my jujitsu gym and then the people who, you know, the fans and the the fetish wrestler interested people, you know, they they love it, too. So it's really cool to have two different like two completely different sides of support, but they like are a synergy to me. You know, they're very different, you know, because like I said, a lot of guys where I train like, you know, they don't think about fetish wrestling, they they just train jujitsu for themselves. And then, you know, it's like, I can kind of tie the two together, but not at the same time. Um, So I think it's a, it's two really nice dimensions to bring together. Agreed. And I think from, we look at everything in life and we mentioned the art form again, but I really do like the fact that especially it's becoming such, it's, it's for a lot of people, some would consider it a niche, but I'm like, you do not realize how much the popularity and the subsidiaries that really go into this different type of genre, this different type of category that people love. And I mean, I'm going to put it out there. You look at things like body worship, you think so many different things. I think it's one of those things from a body and muscular standpoint, but with an overall woman's foundation, if you will, there's so many things that are very attractive with one from the physical standpoint and the overall what's in here in the mind, body, and soul. But I think it's very interesting to see just how big this has really become and how everything what we consider to used to be taboo has really become more open-minded and really more into the forefront. I think that's where it needs to be for a lot of people. For sure. And I'm really glad to be a part of that era that is very just, I guess, vocal with everything. Um, because ultimately, I you know, I, I love doing like fetish content work. Like that's, that's where my soul just feels good. You know what I mean? So I get such a great variety of interests and fetishes and, you know, um, preferences and, and I love it, you know? And I, I think that like, when I first started jujitsu, I was kind of going back and forth because I was like, I don't know if I want to sexualize this, but I don't have to, because when I, you know what I mean? So I realized that I personalized it to myself. Um, because ultimately people are going to sexualize anything. And, um, it's like, obviously look at me, look at me talking about what I do. Obviously I sexualize everything. Cause that's, that's what sells. Yes. It's, you know, it's not like I, you know, you'd be surprised if you saw me in person, I wear like sweatpants and a hoodie out. I don't like, you know what I mean? I don't, you know, I, I don't look like you would think if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so at first I was like, okay, I don't know if I want to sexualize jujitsu. Like I kind of want this to just be my thing. But then I realized, you know what, like 
I like to show off my progress. That's what I love. And so when I do these sort of, um, you know, fetish wrestling videos or whatever beat downs, um, and then I have competitive matches too, where things actually do get competitive and it's realistic. I like to be realistic with it. Um, not always, you know, there's the fantasy aspect there as well. Um, but I really like it for like my progress and I just like to see my transitions and it's almost like a study, a study farm because I don't film my, my normal day-to-day -day training. Like I get so many questions like, Oh, more jujitsu, more jujitsu. And it's like, I'm not going to film like the guys I train with, like, you know, and monetize that or share that, you know what I mean? That's like my sacred space is my actual gym. But knowing that I can set the boundary for what I want to monetize or show and not, you know what I mean? So just like, it's like literally the different dimensions. I go to my gym and train hard and train with everyone there. And it's amazing. They're like family. Um, and then I have sort of this other side. So I actually just bought mats for this room. <laughs> so I'm really excited for that because, you know, I mean, you know, grappling content looks, it honestly just looks dumb without mats. So. Well, you have to do it for the safe and spectacular side of things with mats and overall the combative nature. But what I also do like yeah. about it as well is let's put over the fashion statement over here, freaking sweatpants and a hoodie over here, just going out there. I like your style. Cause sometimes it's keep it oh, yeah. simple. Yes. Oh but, yeah, that's literally yeah what I usually rock. Like me wearing leggings is like extreme, <laughs> or like shorts to the gym. I, I like to stay covered, and that's always how I've trained, mm -hmm. and that's just always what I do. Unless I was like prepping for a show and I was really lean, then I'd maybe like take off the pump cover and look, but then I'd be like, no, put it back on, you know. And I think I think that that's you know, I always questioned why I'm like that. I'm like, well, I do look at my body a lot and I see myself naked a lot. And you know what I mean? It's like, it is nice to just go in the gym and just be like, I'm covered. I'm working on myself and I don't need to look, I just need to feel, you know? And so that's, you know, something that I love about jujitsu is, is in competitive sports. It's, it's about how you feel and it's about how you train and it's about how you progress. It's not about how you look at all because I look better than all the dudes that beat my ass every day. And it does not matter. <laughs> it, it's even worse in some aspects, like a bicep slicer, a calf slicer. Oh my God, that's awful on I me. Mean, a bicep slicer hurts like hell. And my training partners know it too. So they're like, ha ha, you got those big biceps. And, you know, it sucks sometimes. Um, but yeah, I just love the aspect of jujitsu that it's, you just go in there and you train hard. You don't think about how you look because um, no one gives a damn. <laughs> so. No, I think the perfect uh, letterage, the peripheral verbiage, and the overall acronym here is it's the NFG, folks. It's the no fucks given mentality of just going in there and giving it your all and just not giving a damn what anybody has to say. And I think for you, again, I, I cannot say how awesome. And I think it's wonderful that you're doing what you're doing because the past two times we had you on the show here, I can tell just by just your overall gleam and just your overall spirit that you're just going to continue to do amazing things. And one of the things that we see a lot from you, and I got to put this out here i have seen you do some work with my friends miss cindy thunder we've seen skylar renee we've seen sheena the hungarian hurricane bathory oh my goodness you want to talk about just beautiful muscular amazing women i include you in these sentiments man you guys have been putting out some doggone good content man just fighting skills sex appeal customs oh yeah. my goodness for sure yeah we definitely had so much fun um yeah, I had I had a good time with Sydney. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to meet Nadia while I was out in California. Um, but you know, obviously, I will at some point. But um, I had a great time with Sydney, and I had a great time with Skylar, and we had a bunch of fun. Like, um, like we had a whole day where we just filmed like all wrestling content, pretty much. And I did like, which you know, I, my cardio has just honestly, my cardio has gotten like unbelievable for like how calm I am during grappling versus like, just like anything when you first start, you're like dying. But now it's like, I'm so calm. It's so meditative to just grapple and just relax. Whereas when you first start, especially if you have a lot of muscle, you're just like flex 24 seven. And you're like, ah, but now I'm just like floating, you know? Um, and I did like, I don't know. I did like five or six wrestling videos in a row and everyone's like, are you okay? And I'm like, I'm great. Like, let's go, you know? So I'm like dripping sweat. So it was a great time. And I really, really liked um, to be on the fetish plug podcast. And I'm really excited for that to drop. I'm just like waiting. I'm just like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> so, but I know that they were filming like an intro and stuff. And then meeting Sheena was also wonderful. Um, I'm actually going to hang out with her again. 
um, for like a whole week um, early next month. So first and foremost, folks, again, if you've not checked out Fetish Plug Talk podcast, check it out when that does drop. And I think everybody should check it out. And also at the same time, man, first of all, Sheena, let me tell you something about Sheena from the power slap aspect for the work she's done for lingerie fighting championships. This woman is everywhere, much like yourself, putting the grind and putting the face to the grindstone, if you will, just going out there, man. And I look at the two of you together, first and foremost, jacked and stacked. Let's put that out there, man. But also at the same time, man, I see a lot of elegance. I see a lot of poise. And I think you two together is like a hand in gloves. So I got to put that out there, man, because you put out a lot of great imagery there. Yeah, I'm super excited to hang out with her um, because we're going to do so much grappling content. And um, it was just very fun to roll with her. And, um, you know, it's like, Sheena's awesome. She's <laughs> she's badass. So I'm excited to keep rolling with her and her to keep kicking my ass. Um, honestly, because it's it's all good fun. You know what I mean? Like I don't want you know people to go easy on me or whatever. Like it's like I'm like here in my jujitsu journey, and she's like here. You know what I mean? And so I just like that. You know. Um, so her and I are gonna do. We have we have a lot of fun plans. We have a lot of like cosplay stuff that we're planning, which I want to get more into. Um, and have more fun with and she has an awesome awesome photographer that's gonna film us grappling film us boxing and so that's so fun because that's the kind of content i want to get more of not just like content that's monetizable but like content for instagram you know what i mean because you know nothing hits like sick sick like nicely edited high quality like grappling footage like that looks amazing it looks intense you know and i just don't have enough of that yet so I'm very excited to do a lot of that sort of stuff with her and also have fun because her and Sydney are hilarious for sure. So. Oh, agreed. I mean, you look at the personalities too. And we mentioned the camaraderie earlier. I think those women with, again, just the overall strength that they possess both internally and externally, and I'll equate this to you as well, Miss Lexa Stahl. I think from the names that they have, the goddesses, very poignant, very blunt, and very truthful. You have to look at it from a stance too as well. When you're looking at a woman's foundation and their overall being, you have to look at it as it is. All women are queens. There's royal, there's goddesses. There's just overall enchantment that goes into one mind, body, and soul. And I think the mix of just those two in the mats or just whatever that they're doing i think not only did you mention the fun aspect but it's something that and i think you can equate to this as well when a woman sees that type of photo that type of content on social media there's that gravitational pull if you will that really showcases what they can are about with their personalities and their larger than life personas but god dang it man you're also inspiring and encouraging through your words and actions for a lot of the young ladies out there and especially women as a whole i'm glad definitely yeah, no, we had a lot of fun doing content and just a lot of fun in general, honestly. So I look forward to the collaborations that I have set up for this year. I'm always trying to find new people, whether they are, you know, very niche, similar genres to myself or not. You know what I mean? I'm really getting my feet wet and everywhere. And I love that because I love to be multifaceted, not just in content or like my approach to work, but also just in life. You know what I mean? Um, you know, so I like to create a ton of different content with, you know, whoever mostly. Um, so I've been having a lot, a lot of fun with just random fetish work. And it has just been so like, I don't know, like joyful, you know, because yeah, like grappling content is something I can do a billion times and I'll enjoy it. But if it was the same thing over and over again, you know, it would sort of get, you know, a bit repetitive. So I really just like to spice things up and meet new amazing clientele through you know things like clips for sale i've met some awesome people through there like awesome highly professional individuals who are just respectful of your time um and you know just very niche fetishes um which i respect with you know every cell of me um and it's just been fun you know so i've just been having fun with like doing different costumes and doing different stuff and editing different stuff and you know just getting out there on the map in more areas than just muscle fetish or just um, adult content, you know, but also, you know, obviously grappling will always be a part of my content, but also very niche fetishes that are very, very small percentage of people. Like some people will come to me and they're like, yeah, I know I have a foot fetish. It's pretty weird. And I'm like, foot fetish is so like, it's just so common to me that it doesn't even like, you know, it, people you know i'm like 
trust me, it's, I try to, you know, always feel people, have people feel welcome, you know, with me, especially in OnlyFans. And they always say that, which is a very good feeling. You know, they're always happy to share their interests and, you know, obviously not feel like they're being judged, you know, because I never would, um, you know, but I like to really just go deep with like some very niche fetishes and I've been having a lot of fun with that. So <laughs> I got to say the fact that you brought up foot fetish made me laugh because a lot of people don't realize not just the huge market that is, but if you mention that as like a fetish, it's very, it's a common one because it's been like stand the test of time of how much that's a big fetish market. I also look at it from a stand stew as well. Like you mentioned, let me, let's be honest here with folks. Lexa Stahl over here doing her thing thing on the OnlyFans and many of its side of things, as well as clips for sale. I think if you have that market of theirs ass smothering, there's this one over here could dress like a dominatrix and just pull it off like this and like that, like this. And uh, you have so many different outfits that you chose as well for cosplaying that you mentioned so eloquently that really do showcase that pop, if you will, that overall exuberance and accentuated it. But you also look at it from a stance too as well, like the fact that OnlyFans, not only just the occult don't content side of things, the spicy content, if you will, but you mentioned the community and the camaraderie. Like, you don't realize, like, how much that strong fan base is on all these different sites. Oh, yeah, definitely. I have, like, an extremely strong fan base. And, you know, I take a lot of pride in that because I personally, you know, reply to everybody. And, you know, I had pretty close relationships with a lot of my members of my OnlyFans. And they, you know, and a lot of people come and go, which I understand. I understand life. You know what I mean? Obviously, um, you know, but yeah, I definitely have like a very strong fan base and I actually made like a review page. Um, it's called Fan Scout, which was also another modality to maybe accrue like some new fans because I pretty much always am trying new methods to reach new people. Like I recently started a many vids and I only have a handful of videos on there, but I really just did it to build more traction. You know what I mean? If someone only uses many vids, but they see, oh, she also has a clips for sale. Then they're like, oh, wow, she's got a shitload of videos on clips for sale. And I've only been on clips for sale since around Thanksgiving. Um, so I'm uploading, you know, multiple videos per day, pretty much every day to clips for sale. <laughs> um, and I'm filming clips for sale content a ton just because I've had so much fun with it. Um, you know, I really like to just have my feet wet on every single platform. Um, I think that that's a, that's a wise business move. Um, because even if I'm just spending a tiny bit of energy on many vids, you know, you don't know what could come with it, come from it. You know what I mean? Someone might email me and be like, Hey, you know, do, can you do this? Can you do that? You know, for customs and stuff like that. Cause I've just had so much great traction from clips for sale. I've had a lot of new only fans members come from clips for sale. So, um, you know, I just think it's, it's wise to get my feet wet everywhere as much as possible. And, um, no matter what I'm building newer and stronger fan bases through every new site. Um, I would say the only thing that hasn't gotten much traction yet is many vids and that's because I just started it and I only have a handful of videos on there, but I actually started a review page on fan scout and I have some awesome reviews on there and it's like, you know, it's really refreshing that, you know, people understand, you know, the work that goes into like not only creating content, editing it, posting it, scheduling it, but also personally replying to everybody. And not just on OnlyFans, but on loyal fans, on Fansly, email, Telegram, um, you know, a time, Reddit, Instagram, you know, Twitter, you know, everything, you know, it's a lot. And it's nice that, you know, sometimes the fans do recognize like, oh, wow, like she's doing this nonstop, you know. So I have some awesome reviews on my fan scout and that totally just like brightens up my day sometimes. I will say this genuinely since I've gotten the chance to know you in our three discussions and outside of this microphone, this one is probably one of the nicest down to earth people that I know. And I'd say that with a lot of love to you because it's true. But Thank God, you. You're, Thank you. you're very welcome. I care no, a lot. <laughs> I know you're very welcome. I, I here's the thing about it: you reply to everybody, and I think that only not only generates the traction for you, but there's so many means of social media, and people say what they will. But there is the fans leads, there's a lowly fans, there's loyal fans, there's many vids. But I think there's so much stuff out there for people. And you mentioned earlier in, in today's forum, like how much variety is very important, and anything that you do, especially within life, you don't just want to be stuck here. You can also branch out to here and there because you never know what it's going to lead to. Number one, but also at the same time, do you want to be stuck here? and neutral when you can put that fucking gear and drive and just go for it man because that's what the spice of life is and the variety that entails with each and every venture and endeavor that we do yeah and i know a lot of women personally a lot of creators who just kill it just doing their handful of specific 
like um like approaches to content and that's totally great i just think for me personally like my preference is to have fun with a lot of different things you know what i mean so you know it might not be for everyone or they might just think like oh you're just doing it like for the money or whatever but it's like i really do enjoy doing doing new things like if people come to me and they're like I don't know if he'll do this. Like, it's really weird. And I'm like, try me, <laughs> you know, and there's very rarely I will, you know, have to turn down some stuff, but, um, you know, the most time I'm like, hell, if it's, if it's solo, I'll probably do it. So, you know, um, I just have like my handful of limits there, but not many. <laughs> and I, and I think that that's fun. You know, I'm not, it's not, um, you know, I'll do any content as long as it's not against my morals because it's really just good, clean fun. So, oh, first of all, I got to put it like to you like this because the key word and operative word there is fun. I mean, when George Michael sang against, I want your sex back in 87, and everybody does it, but everybody should, as long as you're having the decency of putting out that one, two, three, L O V E, number one, but also number two, you don't want to overstep the boundaries because there is a fine line, so to speak, but also at the same time, man everybody's into something, but there is a line that you do have to draw where it's just like out of the comfort zone. And I think that is what's important with any business and with life and any venture accommodation and comfortability is key, not just to your audience, but to yourself and accommodation and comfortability goes a long way with how levels of how you want to obtain everything. Exactly. And that just goes in line definitely with setting boundaries for yourself. And I think that owning your own business and operating like a modality of websites all day, every day, like, it's been really important for me to set boundaries because a lot of times I didn't have boundaries with myself and, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't log off when I wanted to, you know, it was just like, you know, but now I, I give myself a little bit, a little bit of boundaries, um, you know, and that's something I'm proud of, um, you know, because anyone who's met me knows I'm like a major workhorse. So I'm like, I do need those times where I'm like, okay, I just need to get offline for an hour or even 20 minutes. And I'm like, ah, okay. I'm ready to get back to it instead of just being so obsessive. Um, and, you know, I just think that that's been a lot better for my mental health. And honestly, jujitsu has been major for that because that's about the only time during my day, if I'm not training or sleeping, I am doing something for work. Like always, whether it's setting my phone down because stuff are up, stuff is uploading, you know, it's so it's constant. And jujitsu is about the only thing that you can really turn your brain off because even when I sleep, my brain sometimes isn't completely off, you know what I mean? And, you know, I'm dreaming, I'm thinking about work in my dreams, you know, but jujitsu has just been like, you know, I mean, there's so many memes out there and it's just so true that, you know, you really have to be in the moment in jujitsu. You really do, or else you're just going to get submitted. So, you know, you can't be thinking about like, hmm, I wonder if any fans are messaging me right now. Like, I know that they are, but like right now I'm trying to like, you know, get on top of this guy and like squish him. <laughs> so, you know, so um, jujitsu has definitely taught me not just, it's not, it's not physical at all. It's not just physical at all for me. You know, it's very philosophical for me. So it's been really like good for my soul. So two new things, or like jujitsu and creating more like niche fetish content has been like two very good things for my soul. So I've been having fun. First of all, I'm going to be sitting on this top of this guy and squishing him. I like your style, but no, I, I look at it from a stance too, as well from learning here, you know, dreaming about that stuff and what you're doing. It, it's the creative juices are flowing. Number one, but also number two, you're jonesing because you know what you have to do and you know where the purpose is. I think that's the beautiful thing about life and the endeavor that you're going to. Everything's a journey, man. Everything's about adaptation. Everything's about growth. And I think you never stop learning. Even in your dreams, you never stop learning because you're constantly yeah finding of different ways of how, you know, you want to put that chess board out there and get that checkmate, move the paces, so to speak, to get that checkmate. But at the end of the day, you're seeing where you are and you see the progress, you see the results. We see that in everything that we do, but it's a step-by-step, day-by-day thing, man. And mind you, we think about messages and social media and everything, but also at the same time, you got to kind of dissipate yourself from that because the end goal is here and it's time for the end game, man. For sure. And then another um, fun thing that I haven't really... I guess I post about it, but not too much. Um, so I bought a super sick old Dodge Ram truck. And so um, it's going to be in SEMA 2024 this year. Um, so that's a place that people, probably the only place that people could ever meet me, that fans can meet me. 
Um, and that's something I'm going to start marketing a bit more as my truck gets ready for SEMA um, because I'm getting him ready. We're putting we're putting some sick stuff on him um, and getting him all ready and dressed up to look his best, <laughs> um, getting his physique ready. Um, so that's, if you don't know what SEMA is, it's like the biggest truck show. And I don't know if it's the biggest truck show in the world. Um, but, you know, I think it'll be, you know, I have my logo all over my truck. Um, my license plate, everything, you know, and it's a total show truck, you know, very rarely do I actually drive it. But um, I think that that'll be a fun new way to get my feet wet in another marketing aspect, but also something that I enjoy. Um, so it's been fun to like build my truck and do different things and learn things that I had no idea how to do. Um, so yeah, I've just been learning a bunch of new things and, you know, pretty much applying all of my interests to business as well. So Okay, first and foremost, I'm glad you brought this up because I've seen the photos. First of all, this badass woman next to a badass truck, I was in awe because, number <laughs> one, the the friggin' the truck is amazing, by the way. I got to give you kudos because it's awesome, but I'll tie this into wrestling because here's how awesome this is. This reminds me of Medusa. For those who remember Medusa, she was in WCW. She was in the WWF. Her career venture after she was in wrestling and kind of retired for a little bit, like she'll make sporadic appearances, but one of the things that she was big into and it's been documented is she she loves monster truck roundups and she loves driving monster trucks. So I'm like, you're like the female Medusa right now. Okay. I'm going to be sexy over here, but then I'm going to work on the car over here. You're just putting all the eggs in the basket, man. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's awesome. And I always try to, you know, learn how to do new things. It's like, I want to be able to try, you know, everything. So it's been fun to learn new things that I've never tried or really thought much about. Um, you know, so it's, it's just fun to get feet wet and something that generally interests you, but also, you know, people are like, it's a whole new, whole new set of eyes on you. So there's a lot of OnlyFans girls who are in SEMA. Um, so that will be, I will be the first who's like a muscle mommy. So, you know, that will be kind of a fun, interesting thing. Cause people will be like, oh, cause they'll see a truck and they'll be like, that's a sick truck. And then like, they'll be like, oh shit, a girl owns it. But then they'll be like, oh shit that girl is jacked, you know? So, you know, it'll be a whole different, you know, sort of dimension. Um, so I'm excited for that and see what the outcome is. And I'll, you know, I'll do SEMA for maybe, you know, a year or two, or maybe I'll continue it on, um, you know, but I'm excited to see the growth that could come from it um, and just meeting new people and stuff. So I will definitely be at SEMA 2024, as long as my truck um, travels on the trailer to and from safely to go get his new his new dressings on what I like to say, I, I talk about him like he's a person, but, um, you know, um, as long as, you know, he's safe and he's good and he's ready, um, then I will be at SEMA. And that's probably about the only place that fans can meet me. Cause it's about the only place that I'll go. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not going to the Arnold. Um, you know, I don't go to shows. I don't really, I don't really go anywhere <laughs> unless it's to go travel to like make content and work with other women. Um, like, yeah, that's about the only event that people could catch me at. First off, I respect that because you're focused, and I like that. So let's put that out there. And I mean, you have to be like that. I mean, for us, like, I'm, I'm the same way. I just travel for either work or I just do, like, what I do here. And I think for that is, I think what I appreciate the term focus is because it's like everybody goes out there, and it's nice to go out there and socialize and be out there. But at the end of the day, you know what you want to do. And number two as well, who doesn't want to go see some badass trucks, man? Because there's a market out there. You see in popular culture from the Fast and the Furiouses and different car models and stuff. Who doesn't like a nice whip? Who doesn't like a nice truck? And it goes with the overall aesthetic and appearance and appeal that goes with your overall foundation. So, I mean, I can dig that. And I think absolutely there is a market for that because, number one, who doesn't love, like, a badass truck, the engine and everything that the mechanics, pun intended, that goes into these cars, these trucks, and what the overall stature of it is and the overall just ability and that adrenaline rush, so to speak, is. So I think it's going to be fun for everybody. Oh, absolutely. And so I actually... I bought the truck um, pretty much as is, but now I'm making a lot of changes to it to make it more so of my build. But it ironically is blue and white, like OnlyFans colors. And I didn't even think about that. Um, but I also like that it doesn't look girly. Um, you know, it looks like a it looks like a man owns the truck. You know, I guess the only way you would think, you know, a woman owns it is if there's pink on it or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's ironically OnlyFans colors. So that's kind of funny. So 
just waiting for the times that people are like, because a lot of people will like roast the truck girls and be like, yeah, you bought that with your OnlyFans money. It's like, I sure did. <laughs> like, are you mad? Because you like it. You wish you owned it because it's, it's a bit of like a unicorn in the truck world because, um, you know, it's a 92 and it has low miles and it's in great condition and, you know, it's a manual and it's an extended cab and it's just very quite rare, um, you know, so, and it's in great condition. So I'm excited to, to fix some things on it and we're actually going to put air ride on it. So it's going to go up and down <laughs> with like hydraulics, which is sick. <laughs> um, so I can make it go, you know, more leveled lower, or I can make it go super, super high. Um, so that's an interesting investment for me, something new to spend so much money on, but, um, I'm excited to see where it takes me. And at the end of the day, I'll have the truck forever and it'll be a bit of a garage and trailer princess for a lot of always, you know, you don't want to risk putting miles on it. You don't want to risk anything happening to it when you invest so much time and money and it just looks so damn good. So I'm excited to get him all prettied up because he's looking rough right now. He's dusty. He's got you know, ugly wheels and tires on, um, you know, so soon he'll, soon he'll be looking fresh. So he's going to have to go to the doctor for a while <laughs> and get some work done. <laughs> I got to say, this is like one big episode of exhibits, pimp my ride, the hydraulics. You just got to do the hoop D and the whole nine on the truck. I like it. No, but I, I, first of all, I like that too, for the fact that first of all, the blue and white, the only fans coincidence is great. I'm just going to put that it's like out. spot on too. It's not like it's the same exact shade of blue. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that, too. And I, I think it also kind of ties in. I'm going to put this spirituality. As that's the universe telling you something right there. If you're right. investing your money in the right time and then boom, right? Like, it, it, it fits. It's very fitting. For sure. And I love it, you know, and it's something that I'll have forever. And it's, you know, it's it's actually a vehicle that, that appreciates in value because people, I mean, people are buying these trucks that are like early 90s for like, you know, more than my 2022 Jeep costs you know what i mean like they're you know not all vehicles depreciate you know there's ones that you keep in good condition and you know people sell it for gold so i honestly got a really great deal on it and then now i'm doing my building stuff on it and then i'm gonna take it to sema and see get my feet wet in a new sort of um environment and industry that i it's you know it's it's always a little a little different a little scary to get your feet wet in a new industry um, and kind of be like the rookie, but I'm excited. I got to say, there's a point where I, when I talk to you and I just love your ambition and I love your spark, there's a point in me where I want to ask, is there anything that you can't do? But I got to say, I think whatever <laughs> you do, do you, you take it head on, man. And I respect that. I smile every time I talk to you because God dang it, woman, you're always up in the mix and I love it. But I think one of the many things that we're going to see coming from Lexus Stahl, Temptress over here again, love <laughs> the name, love the identity. I think we're just going to see some more badassery. I think that's the best thing I could say to you, just the overall badassery that you're going to compass. I personally cannot wait to see where everything goes for you. I'm loving these ventures that you're doing. Yeah, for sure. I definitely have a lot of plans. I'm really, really excited to hang out with Sheena again next month. Um, the time that we did hang out, we only had like a couple hours together, like maybe two. And her and I just clicked so well. Like she was so interested in like the bodybuilding aspect. And she's like, I love your ass. And I'm like, I love you. You're fucking badass lady. Like, don't talk about my butt. Like, look at you. Like you're sick she's so strong i mean gosh and you know i'm just really excited to hang out with her for like days and do content we're gonna do a ton of fetish content and a ton of costumes and a ton of grappling and you know it's just so it's exciting to 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 learn from her because she's gonna teach me so much i'm ex I'm, not, I'm excited and a tiny bit scared for um when she helps me with some judo stuff because i know just like a very simple basic hip toss <laughs> and so i'm i'm excited to get thrown by her i don't think yes. i can say that about many people but she can throw me any day she wants. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you straight up. So her and I were in Vegas together when I ring announced the LFC event. I'm going to tell you something right now, folks. I legit thought I was going over. Thankfully, we didn't go full judo throw. But this woman came up to me and gave me one of the deadliest headlocks I've ever been in my life. She loves to play. She loves to have fun. But God dang it, don't be on the side of her headlocks. Jeez Louise, with those muscles and that grip, holy hell. Because she's another one like you, and I'll say this right now. Very disciplined. It's just like, you know what? I'm going to go out here. 
I'm going to get into the combative nature side of things. I'm going to lift weights. I'm going to run. I'm going to do this. Her mindset is outside your overall surroundings and just being that way. I think that's a healthy mindset. And that's the best thing I can compare you to is it's healthy mindsets. It's also, I'm going to put this out here, positively proactive is the best way I can describe it, Alexa. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm really excited to learn from her. And I know she's training for her MMA fight, um, I think in April. So I'm excited to be so close to her while she's training for that. Um, because typically on like my content trips, like my work trips, I try to make them as short and productive as possible because I want to get back home. Um, but when I go and see her, it's actually a bit stretched out more than I normally would do. You know, if I, if I do content with a girl, it's like, all we need is a few hours typically. But with her, it's like, I want to train, you know, I want to, I want to train at her gym every day, you know? So I'm excited to actually, um, you know, not just make it a work trip, make it a, you know, a training trip too. So, and learn from her and, you know, make some badass and spicy content along the way. <laughs> let's, let's put over the spiciness here, man, for a quick second before we get back to the content here. I got to say this as well, because we talk about opening horizons, which a lot of people do. And I think people, I've always said this, if you, you don't know until you try it, so to speak, you know what I'm saying? Then you really start to figure out what you like and what you don't like. You're putting yourself out there. And I think it's wonderful. The spicy side of things, man, the OnlyFans content, and I mean everything that you've been putting out there, let's just be blunt here. Not only sexiness, not only hotness, but I got to say, man, like everything that you're going into that, and a lot of people don't realize like behind the scenes, like we talk about content creation, there's light there's things that go into it that you want to put that right image out there and that overall graphic that overall visual standpoint for people and i think you've been hitting that nail on the head whether it's solo or you're doing stuff with other fellow content creators i think what you're doing right now just keep doing it man because there's a yeah. lot of things that go into it that people don't realize for sure yeah definitely is um but yeah i'm gonna keep doing what i'm doing i've dropped so much content over the past like six months it makes me sick um so you know, that's why I'm so excited for, you know, next month with Sheena. It's like her and I only need, you know, a certain amount of content. And then after that, it's just kind of like, okay, training and getting content for Instagram, because that's something I am realize I'm kind of lacking in is like, you know, the Instagram sort of strict rules is, you know, I need more content that's going to get out there. That's not too sexy. That draws attention. That's not too sexy because of Instagram's rules. So that's kind of like my new thing is that like, geez, like I need more, you know, maybe gym content or grappling content, like very Instagram safe stuff that shows who I am without being too slutty. <laughs> First and foremost, we're going to put this out here. Not slutty at all, ma'am. I got to say elegant. I'm going to say your mixture of elegance and sex. And it's like a lot of the great women out there. Now, let me put this out there with Instagram. Since you put it a great point, we've touched upon this in the past. Instagram is a son of a bitch when it comes to community guidelines. It, it really is. And the reason I put it out there like this, I know it's just there's so many other things out there that are very much more risque or just very like you mentioned the term slutty but stuff that's out there that's so more blah and everything that we're seeing here is just not like i see your content compared to such and such as content you're right there's so many different things that i don't understand how mm -hmm. this would fall under community guidelines i don't get it but it is what it is right yeah the best way that i describe it is like it's basically like speeding on the okay. road you can speed all you want. You can go 200 miles per hour down in a 30 if you want, but you know, you could do it, but you might not get caught. But when you do get caught, you're going to be in trouble. So that's the kind of way I see it. Like, I'm not just going to cry and be like, eh, life isn't fair. Cause like, it's true. It's not, but it's like, you know, some people can speed and I see, I see it all. <laughs> I see it all on Instagram. And I'm just like, I think where it really gets I, I think that just from my own, because I, I really like to look at things from like, I don't know, a psychological perspective and be like, okay, look at correlations. Like, why did this get flagged? But like, this didn't get flagged. I think a lot of it has to do with the booty. And I think that you can show nipples, but you can't show too much booty because, you know, you know, show too much booty, you know, it's going to be straight nudity, which nipples is straight nudity. I don't right. know what anyone says. <laughs> but like, it's it's more provocative like if your asshole is showing it's like okay that should get flagged i don't see many assholes on instagram but i do see a lot of nipples and so i realize i think it's just 
you know, the butt thing. I think a lot of it's, I mean, that's all I get flagged for because I don't have much else to show and I don't, I don't wear sheer bottoms and show all that, you know what I mean? But, um, you know, it just, it doesn't make sense, but just in my head, I always try to like make logical reasons as to why some things get flagged and some things don't. And I think it's like the butthole thing. <laughs> like maybe they think like, you know, that thong's too skinny. We're going to flag you, you know? So, but it sucks because it's such a double edged sword because the only content of mine that does well on Instagram is the more provocative posts. They get, you know, hundreds of comments, thousands of likes, but then I post something in the gym that I think is sexy and it looks great but Instagram hides it. And it's like, why are you hiding the content that's safe? And I know for a fact it's hidden because I mean, sometimes the like count will just be so low. And then as soon as I post a provocative photo, Instagram wants to post it to show it everywhere, but then flag me and, you know, tell, tell me I should, I should probably delete it. And it's like, what do you want? You know, like, why don't they show the content that that they want out there, but no, they show the content that's going to get me in trouble. And it's like, okay, whatever. So I will follow up on these psychological bootylicious vibes over here with your booty <laughs> and ass talk, ma'am. I look at it like this. I think with how we have with Instagram, like you mentioned, like a little nip, nipple showing, and then there's booty. I think again, you're associating the strengths. And I mean, I look at it like this, like we talk about that thong, the thong, 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 and the thongs that go into it. I mean, with your posts, I say this, it's a mixture. It's a mixed bag of just gym positive stuff that people can really be inspired by through the overall just positivity that it brings in the overall discipline and the overall awesomeness. And I'll say this awesomeness and sex appeal to the gym selfie or the gym video, because it is, it, it's what it is from any particular photo and imagery standpoint. But then they go to this side. It's like, okay, we'll highlight this, but then we want to put it back. Like we're teasing you. There's so many things out there. I don't understand it, but also at the same time, like you've talked about the speeding analogy, we're all here for the ride. We are all here for the ride of life. We are here for the ride of what we want to do. So there's so many different ways like to really interpret it, but some may interpret it right. Some may interpret it wrong, but at the end of the day, you're talking about it. Yeah, exactly. And you know, it's just, it's never fair. So, cause a lot of girls will be like, oh, well I saw her post that. So I'm going to post this. And I'm like, no, cause they're going to delete you. If I posted some of the stuff that I see and I'm not going to cry and bitch and complain about it, but like, it just is what it is. It's the truth. If I posted some of the things that I see, I know that I could get taken down. And that's just a risk that I won't take because I've had my Instagram since I was 17. And so that was like my my OG like fitness Instagram. And so I told myself when I was 17, I told myself one day I'm going to make a lot of money from this. I didn't know how. I really wanted to be like social media influencer. But then, you know, stuff just changes and you become who you are and, you know, you do what you want to do. And, you know, I know that this is my fate and this is you know, who I am and my intentions are pure and, you know, but I knew, you know, even, even actually, even when I was like 16, I started my Instagram. So I've had that Instagram for some time <laughs> and, you know, so it's not just a business Instagram to me. It's very sacred. It's very important. It's, you know, it's a part of me, honestly, I've had it for over a quarter of my life. Um, you know, so it's not just business promo. It's just special, you know, I've gotten so many, good opportunities from it. I think you are what you put out into the world, what you manifest, what you put out as well. And I think I'm going to say this right here. You talk about being the Instagram with your photos and everything that has gotten to today. I mean, you're, you're a bright spot and a bright light on the social media side of things. And I mean, everything that we see from you, from where you are, I mean, 16 and 17, that's teenage years of what you wanted to manifest, but then things change here. Things alter, so to speak, but at the same time, it's altered for the better. And I think as people, what a lot of people can take into it is if you're doing what you love, keep on doggone doing it. But also at the same time, if you feel like you're in a situation or you feel like you you know what? I don't want to just do this just to coast, get your mind right, get your grind right, get going. Then it leads to a lot of successful stuff like you and a lot of great content creators are doing. So, I mean, sometimes you got to flip the script. You got to make the change, but at the end of the day, it's worth it. Absolutely. And I always try to remind myself that things are so long-term because I mean, women like Sydney or Brandy May, and they've been in this industry almost for as long as I've been alive. And, you know, that's inspiring. Maybe not quite as long as I've been alive, but like pretty damn close, okay? Um, <laughs> and, you know, that's really cool. That's very inspiring to see how they've seen just everything change so much, you know? And so that just always reminds me, like, calm down. Stuff takes time. 
and I know stuff takes time. I mean, bodybuilding, jujitsu, it takes time. It takes work. It takes effort, you know, but just realizing that, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, I'll be doing this, you know, so it's, you know, that that's very inspiring to meet women who have been in this industry for so long, even, even when they had tapes or talking to like Kip from Utopia Entertainment. Him and I spoke on the phone for like 90 minutes the other week, just bullshitting about a bunch of random stuff. And, you know, he was telling me about selling these tapes and all this stuff. And I'm just like, oh my God, I barely even like used VHS tapes as a kid because DVDs were already out. Um, you know, so just very interesting to see the, the evolution of like the content creation world and to understand it and respect it, even though, you know, I'm the newbies, you know, not really newbies, but like, you know, only been in this game for so long versus them. They've been, they've been there forever since I was, before I was even born. So, you know, super cool. First of all, stop making us all feel old, man. That's how it is. No, I'm, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm like, oh my God, you know, I, I, I past the point where everyone's like, you're so young. And now I meet people who are younger than me and I'm like, oh my God. So. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah. Wait. I meet people who are like 21 and I'm like, Ugh. I remember when I was 21. Right. You know, and it feels so long ago, but it also feels so not, but you know, that's how life is. Oh, of course. Wait till you get to your thirties. It's, it's going to get even, it's going to get even. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but no, I mean, like, first of all, you mentioned a name like Brandy May, who also very multifaceted, but that's a key. I word. love her. Yeah. Such For a sure. sweetheart, man. Oh my God. She's done her thing in bodybuilding, adult entertainment. Her and Kim Buck now have Niche Boutique. Oh, like there's, she's just such a vibrant personality. All right. I saw the photo yeah. of you two on social. Loved it. Yeah. Her and I had a lot of fun. Yeah. We only had a couple hours together, but you know, she was so sweet. Um, and just like informative too about some different things. So it's always nice to meet new girls and you really learn from each other, you know, cause she, we both kind of share different things with each other, you know, that, and you know, you just help each other out, you know, so very nice. And she's, she's a sweetheart. Like she just, she's just someone who just means so well. Um, so really love her, really love everyone I've met, honestly. Well, again, we'll, we'll go back to the point of the fact that you're just a nice doggone person. And we're going to put that over here because this is the side of things that you need to be, folks, because we're talking about life and you and I get very personal and very psychological, if you will, and just bluntness. But that's what you have to do. We mentioned accommodation, comfortability, but folks, professionalism and politeness goes a long way in this gig game. You know what I'm saying? This thing thing that we call the game that is life and just overall business. It goes a long way. And again, it leads you to a lot of great connections, great friendships and everything. And we all want to stay connected, if you will. So United Not Divided, man. I dig it. Yeah, for sure. And that's something that's been new for me because I didn't really do any collaborations until last year. And so it's just been nice just to like meet people in real life and be like, oh my God, you're real. Like, <laughs> you know, like, wow, we're like, we understand each other more so, you know, because a lot of people don't understand um, you know, content creation and, and that sort of thing. So it's just really fun to meet people. And anytime I meet these girls, we're just like, Hey, like we feel like we've known each other, like Hannah H like her and I have been following each other since 2020 or 2019. And, you know, and same with Chelsea Dion, her and I met and we're like, I mean, I feel like I've known you. Like we've chatted, we've never talked on the phone in real time, but like we've done plenty of audio messages. We've talked about a lot of stuff you know, we've, we've asked each other questions over the years and, you know, just nice to have that support. And then you finally meet in person and you're like, we've never met before, but like, it feels like we have. So I did a back workout with Chelsea and that was super fun. And it was a bit different for me because, um, you know, just, just with doing jujitsu almost daily, it's like, my strength is not where it used to be in certain areas. Some other areas it's, you know, I've, I do a lot of machines now, and I love it. And that's perfectly great and fine, you know, but certain lifts I just can't do. Like I can't deadlift a ton anymore just because injuries, um, you know, I have to be very careful with my hamstrings when I grapple. It takes a lot of like, you know, hip movement and hamstrings. And so I have to be very careful. So like, I can't do hamstring curls anymore. Like if I do, I'll only do it if I know I'm not going to grapple for like at least a few days, which is like never. So like I did it before I went on vacation like last year and I destroyed my hamstrings Ooh. and I was like, oh my God, if I would have rolled, it would have been like tear guaranteed. 
Um, so I just think it's it's fun to navigate new modalities and approaches to training based on jujitsu. Um, so it was fun to work out with Chelsea because I was just kind of laughing like, holy shit, I'm a weak bitch now, you know, compared to what I used to be. Um, you know, and, you know, it was just funny because, you know, like people don't understand like grappling is cardio for hours a day. You know what I mean? Of course, your body's going to be taxed in many ways. So, but it's a, it's a thing I'm willing to give up because you don't have to lift as heavy as possible to make quality gains. So. No, I feel you. I mean, there's so many different strategies of just the workout, the overall discipline, the overall talent. And I mean, a lot of people have to find that way to navigate and negate certain things. And I think you have really um, expired and really continue to just do your thing on that front. But we'll talk about Chelsea here because I've seen Chelsea as well. Holy hell, my goodness. She's another one that I'm also very impressed with, with her body of work and her just overall size and her overall stature. I mean, you talk about the community and really liking everyone. I mean, there's just so much great people in the community, but also the genuinity and authenticity. They're they're larger than life, man, but God dang it, they're just a badass and kick-ass people. So, I mean, I think how she negated and how she navigated herself, much like you and all the amazing women that we're discussing in today's forum, I love just the transition, the transmogrify, the overall progression and succession, so to speak, of where we're going, man. So that's life right there in itself. For sure. It's definitely fun to meet a lot of ladies. Oh, and another lady I forgot to mention, actually, um, in terms of like being natives, the industry is Ariel X. I love her. I, I have like a legit girl crush on her. Like <laughs> she, she is so hot. I love her. Um, and she's amazing. So, um, you know, and she actually walks the walk she trains she's a black belt in jiu-jitsu she's been training jiu-jitsu since the year i was born like she's awesome so i'm excited to film more content with her because her and i have some grappling content and things get spicy and we did like a massage and that was really really nice so <laughs> okay so i've had ariel x on the show before and i gotta put this over here for those who have not checked out evolve fights Oh my goodness it's a mixture of wrestling and just overall sex appeal and just overall just hotness, if you will, put it out bluntly, hotness. And I saw the photo between you two as well. First of all, who doesn't like a nice massage, number one, but number I two. know, I was so relaxed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, she did great. She needs to, you know, look at her future in the massage world because I was like, damn, I'd get one from her again. I mean, it, it's the sensuality vibes. And I think with her, she's another one like yourself, very disciplined, know what she knows what she wants to do, just a badass with her belts and everything that she does from the jujitsu side of things. And I got to say, man, there's your next calling. I mean, we've talked about many ventures and careers that you've done thus far being a newbie, but also continuing to grind and strive. And we got to see it with Ariel X and her Evolve fights, if that ever comes into fruition. There's another venture. For, for sure. Definitely. Yeah, definitely lots of things that are going to happen in the future, whether it be near or far. You know, I'm here for the ride, like you say. No, it's, it's the truth, though. And I mean, that's what I love talking about it because it's the same mentality. It's the same mindset. And I think you can equate with me on this because I always use this quote and I love to really put that into my audience and to people is that life is an art form and we're all applying our craft. So let's just apply our craft in amazing fashion, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And it's so nice that I can, you know, with the jujitsu side of things, like apply it to work, you know, people love it, you know, so it's really nice. And that's, that's what I love to do. You know, I love to just grapple on a daily basis, not even for, you know, work endeavors, but just for, for life, for my soul. It's, it's a sport I love as much, if not more, I might love it more than bodybuilding. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, everything has its bodybuilding gave me confidence, um, in life. It really gave me confidence. Um, you know, but jujitsu just like feeds my soul. So like, there's nothing like a good grapple. Your brain is just like so stimulated yet so calm. It's just so meditative. And that's probably the only form of meditation that I can successfully do at this time in my life. So I think what a lot of people and diehards like myself and people that have been watching you do your thing since day one, ma'am, I think the transition that you've had, especially, and I mean, I've been a fan for the bodybuilding work that you've done and we've discussed on these forums that we've had, but I think the transition for you, again, we mentioned hand and glove, but I think knowing you and knowing your spirit and like you talk about workhorse, as we mentioned earlier, I think you're just going to go, like we mentioned, to continue doing what you're doing, but you're also staying true to thyself as a lot of people do. So, I mean, the transition is just shows in itself man like you talk about progress it, it speaks for itself yeah awesome i appreciate that 
You are very welcome. And I got to say, before we do close this out, man, through all the pleasantries and all the things that I do have to say about the great women, including yourself, man, I got to have you back on for a fourth appearance. You're always such a blast for to talk. Sure, to such yeah. <laughs> it's such a, no, I agreed. It's just such a vibrant energy and you're constantly doing something. I can't wait to talk about your next venture and our next edition and our next forum for On the Mic with Mike. And I'm going to say this to you right now, man. We mentioned life is an art form and all we're applying our crafts. If you want to check out this woman's crafts over here, and plus there are a lot of crafts that you do, ma'am. Where can so we follow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never seen anything like it. And, you know, I just, you know, some people have the argument that, you know, you should put all your eggs in one basket so that you can make like an enterprise out of it. But to me, I just, I would rather put, you know, my eggs in a few baskets, but then like throw a little like egg white in that one and another little egg white in that one, you know, and just see what happens, you know? Um, because my argument with it is like, why not create another website? I mean, what are you going to lose from it? You're not going to lose anything. You're going to gain something, whether you gain a dollar or a new follower, it's whatever, you know, it's, it's worth the risk. It's, it's not hard to set these things up for me, at least, you know, I, I learned pretty decently quickly at first I'm like whoa but then I get the hang of it and then just like anything you know it takes time and you just got to train your brain a little bit and then it becomes like second nature well, I think also patience is a virtue and you have to have the right amount of time and overall effort and overall willingness to do it and I think a lot of people can really obtain and really absorb that type of mindset and I mean first of all this one's talking about why egg whites and eggs in a basket you're making me hungry and excited at the same time oh my goodness <laughs> But that's the thing, man, that we can all take from life is just that overall just positive mindset, the positively proactive, as we said. And, man, we mentioned the crafts once more. Where can we follow you on social media, Miss Lexus Stahl? You're all over the place. Where can we follow you? Oh, God. Um, so I have three Instagrams. So I have my normal Lexus Stahl Instagram. Okay. I have my J 99 account. And then I have my truck Instagram, um, which is, like, slowly growing. But that's one of those things that I just know, like, it's not on the back burner. Things are happening behind the scenes and eventually something will come from it. You know what I mean? And that's Lexa underscore Cummins. And then I have Twitter, which is Lexa J 99. I have TikTok, which I don't do much with, but I like to have it. That's Lexa underscore stall two. Um, what else do I have for free socials? I have Reddit. Um, Reddit's fun. I have a Telegram channel that you can find at my URL. I have a VIP OnlyFans, a free OnlyFans, a Fansly, a Loyal Fans, a Clips for Sale, a Many Vids, and I have a Fan View too. Um, but if people want to get the quickest, the quickest chat with me in which I reply personally to all my messages, nobody else has access to any of my pages. So if you get a reply, it's from me or it's from some weird hacker which hopefully that never happens. But um, yeah, it's always going to be for me and that's going to be my VIP only fans. That's where I spend the most, the most amount of time on, um, you know, but then for other special inquiries, I do have a ton of people email me as long as they're professional and they're not just like, Hey, I'm like, what do you want? Like, I'm sorry, but like, please tell me something. You know, um, but there's so many different ways to, to contact me. And Instagram, it's gotten to the point where it's so hard to filter my messages. I I check all my DMs pretty much on everything. You know, I check, I feel like I see the majority of things that people say to me, um, besides on TikTok, because I don't really go on there much. But Reddit, I check my DMs, but I can't guarantee that, you know, everyone's going to get a reply because a lot of it is just what I like to call fuckery. It's just like, Hey, and it's like, okay, I'm sorry, but like, please set yourself apart from the rest. You know, if you actually want some of my time. Um, but yeah, I do a lot with obviously my free and VIP only fans. My fans is all inclusive. It's awesome. My loyal fans. I have, I think over 900 videos <laughs> uploaded on my video shop and loyal fans and loyal fans. I love because they're so fetish friendly. Um, so you can find an array of stuff on there. Um, a lot of stuff that isn't allowed on only fans. So, you know, I, I do love loyal fans and I hope to see more come from it. And that's been a grind that I've had since 2021 mm -hmm. and not much has came from it, honestly, but I just stay true to it and I like it. And I know that, and, and it's been really popping off more this year, 2024. 
um, you know, more people have been finding my loyal fans and, you know, all those years of me uploading videos sort of, I sort of use it as like a content organization for myself because having, you know, over a thousand videos, is very hard to organize. So it's like, if I'm like, do I have a video like that? Like, what do I have? And then I'll like search up a keyword on loyal fans and I'm like, oh yeah, that one's a good option for this person, you know, or whatever. Um, so yeah, I do it all. I really almost do it all. Um, so yeah. <laughs> I will say this, the array, as this one put it, the array of content in social media will be in the links in the description below here. For sure. just, no one got all that. No, you're fine. They were was, only fans, and that's probably it, which is understandable. I, just know it's all organized in my easy, easily accessible URL. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but that's great. I like how you put that. But, yo, I got to also mention the fact that the thing that you had me cracking up was there's a lot of people that do that in DMs. People say more than just, hey, like, be more specific. Put more sentences together than just. Yeah, hey. I'm like, come on, like. You know, and it's not that I need, like, I'm not one of those who's, like, tribute me or whatever. But, like, if, if somebody sends me a detailed request, they're going to get a reply. Because I, I I check everything, and business for me comes from all aspects. Um, and, you know, so if I get an email that says, hi, I need to talk to you. I get that sometimes, and I'm like, what? <laughs> Why? You know, and, you know, I've just been better at this point about not replying. But usually I might. Sometimes if people email me, I might give a reply, but then if it goes nowhere, it's like, dude, come on, like, you know, don't bug people, you know, you can go look at so many pictures of me on the internet for free. There's so many. Go have fun. Do whatever you want. Please just don't tell me about it unless you want to purchase content, <laughs> you know, and not to be like that, but, you know, you know, messaging a plethora of people per day. I mean, it's a lot of work. You're not being mean, yeah. And you're not being mean. It's just like, hey, like respect your time. Yeah, you're not gonna go into Walmart and be like, hey, hey. <laughs> the person's gonna be like, okay, what do you want? Like, and you're gonna be like, I need to talk to you. And they're like, oh, well, what do you want? And they're like, I don't know. I just want something or something. Like, I don't know. People will literally be like that. And I'm like, what? But how how crazy is it that people don't realize? And I know people say what they will about OnlyFans or whatever, or any endeavor that you're in. You have to realize, folks, business is business. Like you have to treat everything like a business. Yeah, for sure. And that's only a very small percentage. I right. mean, I have so many amazing fans who are just they're they'll be watching this now. So I just want to say thank you. And I do a lot of like actual like chatting updates on my OnlyFans. Is something I started doing. Um, so I uploaded one yesterday that was like eight minutes of me just giving updates about random stuff, like, you know, maybe stuff that I filmed or stuff that I have coming up, like travel or, you know, how school's going or how training's going and stuff like that. And, you know, I just like that personable aspect because, you know, it's just, you know, no one wants to feel like they're talking about constantly. They want a real person. And so I find that that's really where my my values lie with only fans is like reminding people like, listen, I'm a real person, you know, so don't treat me like a robot, you know, um, you know, and I'll, I'll, tra I'll treat you the same. Cause I have very in-depth conversations with some of my fans and, you know, I don't expect anything out of it because I do it by choice. Oh, and that's, that's why we have amazing people like you in this world and amazing content creators. And like I mentioned, folks, follow her on the array of social medias. Again, links will be in the description below. Check out yours truly, stephenmikeshow.com, smshow1 or mcl92 on Twitter, and larkin underscore 92 or mlarkinmb on the Instagram. Subscribe to the YouTube channel where you can hear the first two interviews, the first two appearances of this summer <laughs> over here, doing our thing thing on, on the mic with yeah. Mike. And you'll get the third appearance, much like we're recording here tonight. So check out the content. Check out, check out Lexus Stahl's content. And as I always say with each and every form, beauty, strength, and dominance, the three key elements that make women the work of art that they are. And Lexus Stahl, temptress. I include you in those sentiments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And thank you, guys, every one of you, for watching. Later, guys.